Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the best two hours of your week. Star Trek Lexington Last Line. At least the best two hours of my week. But then again, my life is awful <laughs> right now, so that's not a that's 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 not a very high mark, but still. Yeah. You know how much I love doing this. Anyhow, hi, welcome back. So gentlemen, how we doing today? Not bad, not good. bad. Good. Good. Good, good to hear. All right. So, are you ready for some more Star Trek shenanigans? Oh, yes. Yeah, let's, let's, truck, let's truck through some stars. <laughs> uh, okay, then. Let's, let's, let's do that. It's a, as, as Zeph from Cochran said, we're on some kind of Star Trek. I love that. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, I already caught Coinless up on last week's session because he wasn't here, but... Because I made notes now, and I like to read them, so I have feel like I did something important. I'm just going to go through some of the highlights. So uh, the session before, we found that the ship that was taking the uh, senior staff captain uh, had been destroyed. And so we met up with the ship that found the wreckage, brought the wreckage with it, because there was so little left. Picked through it, uh, found two important things. One, uh, the charred remains, very charred remains, of uh, Chief Security Commander Ferguson. And also that the ship was attacked by the Ardestians, this being a foreign ship, so that means uh, it was red on blue um, fight. That was that was unexpected. Uh, so yeah, so we decided that we are going to proceed to the location where the ship was destroyed. Excuse me. And in the meantime, we received a uh, mis message from the Ministry of Intelligence that we'd asked for. That has the logs from the CDF Mars, the ship that first encountered the Ardestians in 2229, showing what happened that, yes, as they said, they attempted communication four times, and they detected energy spike, and then they attacked. Um, and there's other encounters between Cochrane ships and Ardestians, where the Ardestian, uh, the, the Cochrane's eventually just stopped trying to communicate because it wasn't working. Uh, so SORAB takes this information, and shows it to the captive Ardestian that we had, and convinced it to contact its people. It does, and we get back the information that's the log from the ship that the, Ar that the uh, Cochrane's attacked. And we found out that that uh, energy pulse we detected, or they detected, was a distress beacon. But of course, the Cochrane's had no idea if they were being paranoid, because they didn't know what was going on. So... Yeah, and if I recall correctly, that's basically where we left 
off. Uh, I, I believe so, it. yeah. Any, it, either of you guys remember anything else happened after that? Because I don't. Eh, not really. Mm, well, well no. sorry. <laughs> you wouldn't fish because you weren't Yeah, there. I was like, <laughs> no, I don't remember really. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't here either, so. Big oh, wait, you weren't? No, I wasn't here last week. I oh. got stuck. You weren't, man. I'm. I, I'm just gonna blame the fact that it's been the worst month of my life. Let's we'll just go with that. Okay, moving right along. I have been distracted. Okay, so, man, if if Matt was here, I'd have him do those. He'd have plenty of time to study the yellow language with our um, little Sorab, uh, little Sorab's um, roommate, uh, mental mm. roommate. Um, but him not being here means he can't do those roles. So that's what you get for not being present. Tisk tisk. All right, so where we're going to be next is, so we were headed towards the location where the scout ship that had the senior staff was destroyed, and nothing else really is going to have happened in the interim, so now we are there. So we find the location, and we're able to detect there's just, like, tiny little fragments from the ship remaining that weren't, like, picked up. Like... Like just itty bitty bits of scrap here and there. So we know we're in the right spot, and doing some scans, you can tell, yeah, there was a warp core breach here uh, about a week and change ago. So you're at the location. What else do you want to do? Uh, so what I was trying to do, what I what I had pitched was trying to track mm -hmm. if we could detect any warp signatures and, and track a direction. All right, that is going to be a roll, of course. Uh, let's see. Is that a roll I have to do? I was pitching that to the captain to have somebody do. <laughs> well, there's there. Are, uh, let's see. The people here uh, who would be able to do that are basically you and Chris. Uh, well, that what that roll is going to be is a. Intelligence, Starship Sensors, and uh, Warp Drive Technology. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so that was Intelligence. Starship Sensors. Starship Sensors, which is all the way down here. Somewhere there it is. And what? Warp Drive Technology. All right, so I'm rolling against a 46. Could right. be Both worse. Both you and Chris. Actually, Chris would have a better chance at it, looking at his stats. Yeah, I'm looking for my warp drive technology, and of it's course, near the I very, think my... it's alphabetical, so it's near the very bottom. Very bottom. Bottom right. Oh, you jeepers! That's why I have to go. So yeah, you've down. got a, a 50, a 20, and an 82. So it looks like I have to beat a 51. If it... Comes out to 50.6. Okay. Comes out to what? 50.6, I'd have to beat. So, 51. I'm rolling it to 46. You're rolling it to 51. You guys are yep. definitely capable of both doing that. I guess. All right. Okay. Well, there's my roll. Let's see what it gets. 42. That's a success. All right. Let's see what I get. So maybe it'll just I, help you if you get right. much better. All right, I'm just going to help him. <laughs> <laughs> that First is... day back, and I'm like, I, I was refreshed and that weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am ready to rock. Yeah. All right, Beautiful. so if you will refer to uh, roll 20, I'm moving the thing to the star chart. There it is. Da -da -da. Let me switch over our viewing audience to see it too. too. Let me, uh... Ah, space. <laughs> All right. So you should see towards the left side. It's kind of tiny in in well, it's blue lettering, but Tim should still be able to see it. It's foreign scout. Destroyed. That's what we call it. It is distinct enough for me. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I don't know, Tim. I just got to That I'm confirming. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell the way in which you were <laughs> saying it. Sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, so, right, so let me go there. All right, what you're gonna see is that the ship went 
directly towards the Archer Nebula. So that's going to be in this direction right here. So that's why we're going to want to go if we're trying to catch up with them. Yes. Yeah, the only warp signature is that you see right here. Well, actually, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see a few. You're going to see a slightly fainter one coming from the direction of Tevar, which, which appears to be the uh, scout ship. Uh, you're going to see one coming in from up here, uh, which is looks like it was the ship that discovered the wreckage. That one's more fresh, and that same warp signature heads exactly the same direction we just came from towards the wormhole station. So the only other warp trail. Well, actually, the yeah, the warp trail that um, you see is two of them. One going in and one going right back out from the same direction. That appears to be our mysterious attacker. Alright, so what are we going to do with this information? Uh... You're muted, Tim, if you didn't realize. Sorry. Yeah, um, that was... So tracking the the one that attacked is definitely was the goal. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, that's ultimately up to the captain, but... <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure the next in line would be Eric. Oh, wait. Well, I mean, it's probably <laughs> Tim now. <laughs> it would actually be... Tim, uh, so I guess Tim. Eventually, it would work down to it would work down to me. Welcome, vice, vice, vice captain. Yes. And fish is at the bottom because he has to be. I I am I am as close to captain as Data. I'll take that. <laughs> yes, you actually are. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, was there any other information we thought we could get while we're here, real quick? But it would have to be real quick because we have a limited amount of time to catch up with these guys. I don't know. You tell uh, me. Yeah. All I'm curious about is, is it literally just like wreckage? Because like, there's no like tech we could maybe scavenge from it at all? Uh, no one really tried. I mean, the wreckage is all sitting in the shuttle bay right now. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to do that, we can just get Basically, there. Basically, the, yeah. the, the, the part, the largest part that we still have is like, the front half of the bridge and the outer pieces of the nacelles. Everything else was basically vaporized. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, Chris, you want to help me out? Just look for maybe the, the stealth drive? Oh, we already did. That's gone. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Uh, based on my expertise, it's gone already. Uh, black box? Kind of like data storage we already... You know, no one... I don't think anyone asked to look for that. They asked for a computer core, but no one said black box. Mm. All right. You know, you can try to find one if Yay. you want to. This is something you can do while underway, so this doesn't. This isn't a delay of anything. So... All right. Well, then, if we aren't, if we hmm. don't have to be waiting, then uh, we should definitely head over to try to track that device, right. that ship. Should I just make a roll for that, or? Uh, so what that's gonna be is, <clears throat> well, first of all, you're not entirely certain what the thing's gonna look like, but you yeah, know this doesn't someone... have a, enough meat on it for me to understand and completely. <laughs> yes, you know what what uh, skill would kind of give you an idea of what a alien black box might look like? Astronautics. Tim's muted again. If you didn't realize. Uh, I got astronomy. Well, Tim has astronautics. That's true, I do. Uh, do that, I, didn't, yeah. <laughs> I thought they were doing something, though. I was going to let them have this scene. Uh, eh. but, well, but, actually, Chris, okay, Chris also has astronautics. He has an 81 in it. And an eight, oh, well, that's, goodness. Yeah, that's so than Chris I have. would be rolling an 82 on this one. Yeah, narratively, I was just like, did we check for a black box? Both of you kind of like stop, look at each other. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, Eureka. we haven't. All right, so... Got an 82% chance of finding it there, Chris. All right. There. I take nothing for granted with the way I roll, and... Ooh, you just made it. Uh, yeah, know. you find something that looks like it very well could be uh, the 
proverbial black box. Uh, so I'll definitely like sort of like notify Mr. Fish since it was his uh, request. Dr. Fish to you. Dr. Yeah. Fish. Well, uh, that's good. Now that we have the black box, I guess we, uh, you, uh, out of character, Chris technically probably has the best technical skills for o cracking the bat bad boy open. Mm -hmm. uh, I could I could take a crack at it. Uh, but that's definitely probably Chris's expertise since this isn't like weird meat tech. This is just like normal technology. Yes. Aww. It's weird that we've had an entire arc about trying to like open up a semi sentient toaster, but like, now, it's back to, <laughs> now it's back to normal tech. <laughs> yes. Oh, I want the semi sentient toaster. Yeah, those are, those are fun. Reminds me of a scene from the recent season of Lower Decks. <laughs> I haven't I mean, seen I... any of it. I I that started after I got dis. So please don't spoil any of it for me. I oh, I, that's why I was not saying it. I take no. I'm not saying any more than that. Thank you, sir. Okay. I guess I'll make a roll to try to crack it open. And yes. If I fail, I just end up giving it sentience. With you know, it's normal. I mean, if you want to, uh, this is going to be um, intelligence and computer technology with a negative fifteen because it's it's very foreign technology. I have 15 computer and technology, so 80 plus 15 divided by 2. Divided by two. Oh, I screwed that up. And then you said a minus 15? Yes. And if I fail this, it gains sentience, right? If you get 100, it gains sentience. Ah. It's close, though. He still failed, so you are not able to make heads or tails of how to work this thing. It's not sentient, but it does hate humans now. <laughs> Great. Hey, did you know that Chris actually has higher intelligence than you? Really? I don't yes. want to brag, but... Yeah, he's got an 82. You've got an 80. Really? I never yeah. even realized that. So you're not. I mean, you probably person. just assumed he didn't. Yes. Yeah, you, you probably <laughs> just saw me as an old like uh, hardware, you know. Hey, I have. I'm the only one with a 99 in biotechnology. No one can take that away from me. Holy. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, he's the one beat that's there. Maxed on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I put another point in, it gets reset to a one. <laughs> Stack <laughs> overflow. <laughs> it's like a, yeah. I get that plus one ring of like biotechnology and she's like no oh, i've been completely rude why 2k happens to dr fish all right so he is unable to uh do anything with it so what next i mean i could certainly give it a shot okay so for you it's gonna um... be the same role uh you've got a 30 in computer technology, so that's going to be a 112 divided by 2 minus 15. Oof, we're going to beat up. Uh, 41's possible. Oh, of course it's possible. Uh, anything's possible. Yes. Right. Nope, not even close. Ah, nope. So basically, that. neither one of you are able to even figure out how to power the thing up in the first place, let alone make it interface with your Systems. I mean, if they yeah. want help, I could try. It is a tip. Absolutely. What's, try. Now, what is the role again? Because intelligence like was... plus computer technology minus fifteen. Why is it minus fifteen? Oh, because. All right, so that's a you got it. The total is eighty for intelligence, computer technology. Yeah, but computer technology is seventeen. And I'm taking minus fifteen, so that's. Well, no, you, you, you divide them, then you subtract it. Oh, uh, okay. So it's going to be 40, minus, you're rolling a 25, if I'm correct. 40, yeah, so that's 25. Uh, doo, doo, doo. Oh, you just missed it. Oh, <laughs> you're able so to get close. it to just, it, you're able, it just kind of like, it, it slowly starts to light up, and then, just. Yeah. 
some All reason, right. we just can't ever crack open any of these things. Something in that direction, guys. <laughs> Did we try turning it on and off again? Well, you couldn't even turn it on. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Maybe if we turn it off, we double turn it off, then it'll turn on. The, the Ardestians turned it off. Two negatives make a positive, after all. The Ardestians turned it off for us. Oh. So... All right. So you're going to start heading in the direction of the Archer Nebula, following the trail. Uh, and as you go, it's going to get progressively heavier, uh, slightly less decay. Uh, with that roll that you got earlier, uh, by the time you actually reach the nebula, it goes into the nebula. You estimate you're about a half day behind it. Now, you're in the Archer Nebula. So, I don't know if you remember uh, the nebula from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. It's very similar in configuration to that one. Actually. The one there where they uh, blew up the thing? Yes, the Mutara Nebula. Okay. So, what's going to happen is it's actually going to... Uh, it's going to kill the shields, and it's going to heavily interfere with the sensors and the view screen. Okay. All right, so how do you want to proceed? Um, geez. Uh... I mean, part of me wants to. I mean, it's the it's the it's the it's the Ardestians, right? Yes. Part of me wants to have our Ardestian friend try to hail them and request information on the attack. So they're actually our friend or more of like begrudging ally? They're, they are willingly participating in a diplomatic venture. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> now remember, we, we told this guy so far nothing of this. He has no idea yeah. about the, the Ardestian attacking the foreign ship. No, I did. You did? Yeah, I, I showed him that, uh, that we had that there was a uh, there was a foreign vessel destroyed, and that the Ardestians it seemed the Ardestians had shot it down. Oh, I did not. I don't remember that. And we okay. were trying to get answers on that. Okay. All right. Well, it's your it's your adventure. Choose how you would like to proceed. Um. You want me to go uh, brain talk with the Ardestian? Okay. Brain talking time. I like brain talk. Yes. All right. So how do you start? Um, I'm going to... Uh, All right. Well, it's it's a it's a military. The Odestian is a military. He's he's a soldier. He understands hierarchies. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to visualize uh, the hi the in a hierarchical structure, kind of the people that he's met so far, which is basically just me and fish and uh crystal and then security guards security guards are under us than us and then these this group of people that um i'm going to display as like missing like they're supposed to be there but they're not um and i'm going to uh visualize them being taken onto the foreign vessel 
and then shift the vision to the foreign vessel that's in our stuff, that's in our bay. That this is the foreign vessel they were on. And uh, I'm going to visualize kind of our ship in the in, in the nebula and an Ardestian ship in the nebula. And I'm going to kind of imagine the Ardestian ship destroying the foreign ship and us needing to talk, you know, us trying to talk to the Ardestians. To f and the que and it's going to be kind of a question of like moving these missing people like are they here on this ship type of thing okay so he's going to say so I understand I believe I understand the situation so what are you requesting of me I'm going to show it two scenarios. One in which uh, we hailed the ship as clearly alien beings doing it, and they open fire. And the other as him contacting the ship and then communicating back. Okay. To to seek information on you know these people and the attack the Ardestian will say well considering that I don't really feel like getting attacked uh, blown up on your ship oh you've put me in a difficult position you do realize Um, I want to portray that we don't have a whole lot of options for finding our people, but I'm not, I'm trying to figure out how to visualize that. Oh. Um. Mm. Yeah, there's not much I can offer in trade except for freeing another one of the Ardestians. But, like, that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, potentially. We haven't. We've only gotten his cooperation. Their this one's cooperation. We haven't got anyone else's yet. Um, so that's sketchy. Very sketchy. Um. I guess I'm just gonna ask it, like. What would I, I'm going to kind of present it as a trade, and in, within the trade, like what what it's giving me is this communication, and I'm waiting to find out what it wants me to give it. We're able to contact them. You give me and my fellow crew members to them. So we can not be captains anymore. I mean, okay. Let me think about this. We've already established communications with the other Ardestians. They know that we were involved in that conversation. Right, like that was what happened. They when they con he contacted his uh, 
his superiors? Or yeah, I was part of that conversation. They know I was part of that conversation. Right? Yes. Okay. So we have the opportunity to talk to them without this one. Obviously, there's a there's going to be a communications barrier. It's going to be a language barrier. Or it's going to take longer because we just don't think at the same rate that they do. Um, but we have that opportunity. We have that means. And frankly, it's probably safer to have them off our ship anyway. <laughs> like, that is a point. We only had them here for study and now for this communication. But we've established communications with the rest of the Ardestians. Like, I don't know how many other Ardestian ships know that we're on speaking terms, but we have opened communications to the point where we don't necessarily need this guy to initiate anymore. I'll be back uh, in a sec. So, yeah, I think I'm going to take that to Crystal and, and propose that as worth doing. Man, I wish he was here because I don't like putting words in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, Should we send him a message, maybe? If he freaking responds. Yeah. Are you sending it on Discord or? Uh, I, I don't think I was going to ask if you were texting him or whatever. I think I got a new number that I don't have. Uh, that's distinctly possible. Uh, well, don't you love it when the important questions come up and there's... <laughs> It's not a cat. It, it just, it's got to happen inevitably. It, All right. It's always the... Let's put it this way. Uh, I guess this needs to be a standing policy. If the captain isn't here, it's going, the decision is going to be made by whoever is the next highest in command. All right. So I'm going to approve it then. Um, so uh, I, I will, I will agree to those terms. Um, obviously this is going to require some amount of us like, meeting up somewhere outside of the nebula so it doesn't interfere with the teleporters. Yes. Um, I'm going to present that, you know, the nature of the nebula. But, uh, but yeah, we can, we can arrange that. All right. You'll, you'll communicate that uh, however necessary. That's fine. That's not going to be a big sticking point. I am back. You are back. Okay. All right. How many things exploded while I was gone? All of them. Oh no. Surprisingly nothing. Dang it, Chris. <laughs> Dang it. I was I was <laughs> hoping we could add meat based supplements. Place usually place. I would figure he's the one that's exploding stuff, that's why I say that. But... Weirdly enough, I, I actually guess. I usually just I, I patch up the explosions, which doesn't feel right but well i did make that one brain explode but yeah those you know not that got a, got a, what's the old age got to crack a few eggs or something like yeah that. explode a few brains to make an omelet exactly <laughs> all right one of them things so we're gonna do the thing going to um All right, so you're going to patch him into the, 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 the whole system um, to be able to communicate. And like last time, you're going to be able to kind of like read over his shoulder as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, I'll be monitoring, and I'm sure someone else will be monitoring text or the, the translation, I mean. Mm -hmm. All right, so what is about to happen? So again, this is just blazing by. It's, it's very difficult to uh, keep up with all that's happening. But he is able to establish 
contact with the other ship. And now you're gonna you're going to see uh, up above the, the first thing is I'm gonna give overlay the information who he is, his situation, um, and say that we have a request for all right, so what's the exact request again? It's basically we want to know we want to know the what was going on with the attack and whether or not they have our uh, the crew that had been abducted by that ship. All right. Um, this whole exchange is going to go on for like only 10 seconds. Uh, but there's still a whole lot that's going to be kind of lagging behind. Uh, but at the end of it, the uh, our Ardestian our is our going to say, they don't agree to our terms uh, whatsoever. I don't know what they're doing, but they are not willing to talk whatsoever. And so That's you're not gonna, a great sign. We're going to go to red alert. <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're going to see the transcript. He's going to the other ship's going to say, we are under special orders. We cannot comply with your request. We are to terminate communication immediately. That's that's basically it. That's good. All right. So uh, our sensors are hindered. Yes. Um, what's over theirs? Um, presumably. Um, we uh, we definitely need to go to red alert. Everyone needs to be at stations just in case. Okay. And, uh, oh, geez. Um, yeah. Um, I guess we progress at, uh, impulse speed. Or, yeah, a progressive impulse. Uh, we want to try to get out the other side of the nebula in case they, if they, okay, if they don't, how long is it going to take us to get through the nebula at impulse? Uh, at impulse, actually, uh, judging by the size of it on, um, let's see, if we look at the map again. Five minutes. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, no. Uh, well, good news no. is you actually can proceed at warp through it. Uh, because if you didn't... Let's see, this nebula is... Ah, it's under okay, there it is. Uh, if we do a little measuring... Remember, each of these squares is one light year across. Uh, so this nebula is like eight light years across. So we would, we would never make it through it at impulse. So like three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> it actually at warp is going to take at warp 8.5 a few days to get through. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll just proceed then and, uh, See whether or not it just comes out the other side. And stay on high alert the whole way through until we know whether or not we're getting attacked. So we don't just want to, like, avoid it? Well, we need to find out if our... We, like, I don't... We need to find out whether or not our crew is on there. Ah, uh, okay. And... But if we did avoid out of character, if we did avoid it, we would have we would get Crystal to be the permanent captain. Sounds like a one to be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Search harder. It's like what? Um well 
Yeah, so... Do you want me, uh... So where in the nebula are we now? You are... We're on the far left edge of it. So, like, over here? Or, like, over here? Hang on. So, basically, draw a line from the wreckage to where the nebula is. We're on the outer edges of it there. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, are we here? Hang on, I'm on a different or... page. Hang on. <laughs> I am looking like, at other things. Where gas first shows up? Or are we, like, here, where the nebula gets, like, real nebulous ish uh, We're just where it's starting to get real nebula-ish. So over here. Closer to there, yes. Okay. Um, so if we... If we head out here... We should be able to scan for their ship leaving the nebula without directly following them. Hmm. So we're trying so that, to track down the invisible ship, or we potentially they're not. The they're not invisible. Ships. Okay. They don't have the cloaking. Um, so if we go out here, we should be able to track them if they leave the nebula. But also, this puts us in a position where maybe we can talk to. May we can negotiate the release of of these Ardestians to some for information with someone who knows what the heck is going on on why this ship isn't going to answer us. We need to talk to the uh, Ardestian leadership anyway. Like that, the we're waiting to hear back, right? Because the um, obviously a ne agreeing to negotiate terms was not was above the pay grade of the people we talked to, and they were referring back to the the empire weren't they i believe so yes so we want to be somewhere where they can reach us anyway mm -hmm. so if we go over this way we can keep scans watching for them coming out of the nebula and we can be in position to actually communicate with the ardestians when they reach out and also if we have the opportunity to reach out to negotiate the release of these prisoners Okay. And then we're not directly following them, so we don't. We have less like we're less likely to just have them open fire on us. That also, and tactically, it works for me. It's your choice. I mean, if you, is that what you want to do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Unless someone has a better idea. Nah. You, you do space stuff good, so. <laughs> Let's say go for it. Stuff good. All right. So you are going to make your way over that way and just take up station and wait. And wait. And wait. Uh, how long are you going to wait? I mean, uh, it's going to take them a few days to get out of the nebula, right? Yes. Um, so. It'll take you three days, actually two days to get out that way. And presumably they were only like a half day ahead of us. So they're, it's going to take them longer than that to get out About. the way they were going. Um. Yeah, because we get out at three days, or this three light years. They don't get out for five. For whatever this unit of measurement is. Well, that is one light year. Yeah, so... So, so yeah, we well, get out... No, we we out. get out in... Well, we at warp 8.5, we go, uh, like, three light years a day. Well, I'm just talking raw distance. We leave the nebula at three, around three light years. So it takes um, a little, and then we, we probably go a little bit further than that for scanning purposes. About two but like seven. we we have scanners back after three light years. They don't leave the until like five light years. Mm -hmm. And we don't know so their exact we, speed, uh, but it's no. almost certainly so, slower than ours. Yeah, so we have time to position ourselves and keep scanning, and. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this would probably be so. I want to reach out to. I want to reach out to the um, intelligence guy on Terra Two again. Okay. And this would probably be a really good time for, uh, since the Algokli is ready now, this would probably be a really good time for Fish to start working out the details on how he's going to deliver it and where he's going to deliver it. I know, I already mentioned about that was in the plan, is I have this machine that just basically spreads it like ma at massive speeds and uh, helps like cause it to propagate at a heightened speed. I couldn't get mm -hmm. the Algakli to do it naturally, but by using this device, which I remember setting up in advance, I have it in my like notes. Um, what I call it? I don't know. Algaklinator, I think it was. I don't remember. <laughs> the Algaklinator. <laughs> I, I, I think it's literally what I named it. I think. Uh, <laughs> Can you make like a soup out of it, like an Algakli cheddar? Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Cup of cheddar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but um, basically, yeah, basically, that, that do you know where you're been. delivering it? Uh, well, I'm gonna put it on the planet that we want to. That planet is a very long ways from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're probably not ready to do it. Um, yeah. just drop it there, and it'll do its work. I guess I could build like a, a like an, a mini pod that just auto pilots it to the place in advance. Um. We Where are, is that planet? That is. Uh, it would probably take significantly longer, seeing as how far we are, though. Yeah, that. Um, let's. I'll just make a mini warp drive. It's fine. Easy. <laughs> let's do some quick math. Um. All right. So, if we're about. Let's just make a little mark for where we are. Um. Yeah, so, Algoclinator. So if we're about. About right there, Tim, or a little farther? Oh, hold on a second. What? I was on the other tab. Do you see the dot the now below tab. the Archer Nebula? Nebula? About there or farther down? What dot? I don't see a dot that's down there. Oh, wait. I'm in the wrong freaking layer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I'll do it. Out of, out of character, I've got a friend dropping something off, so I may have to just step away for a minute. No problem. Oh, if you must. I, I'm thinking have... somewhere about here, though. About there? Okay. Uh, then let's do some quick there. So that's where we, um, unless my memory is incredibly faulty, uh, where we were talking about was somewhere right about here, <clears throat> where that one planet was. So that's what one planet was? The, the planet that we were going to terraform. Yeah, but where is that? Do you not see? I'm on token layer. Ah, yeah, I see it. That's a very long line. <laughs> Are you pinging somewhere? I've got no, I, an arrow going. I see, yeah. I don't see the arrow. It's a red arrow. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing it though. Uh, weird, because I, I, I'm looking at it. That's like that's weird. Thirty-seven light years. <clears throat> yeah. Which right, so fish? So... That's what, like six minutes. <laughs> it's more. I think it's like half a half a second, probably. Tops. Okay. That's like multiple weeks for us with our. With yeah, but in, in out of game, you know, from the omnipotence perspective of the player, it could be like instantaneous if you wanted to, right? Right, GM. Uh, if, right. For our and... purposes here, eh, sadly not. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Worth a shot. It was worth a shot, but sadly it was a missed shot. So okay. Uh, Alright, so So what are you wanting to do with the Algogly? Because uh, you, you obviously you can't do that if you're not yeah, well I mean I have the Algogly. I thought we were just gonna sit on it until I mean I guess what I could do is yeah, for now because it's kinda not gonna do anything until we actually get to the plant to start terraforming it. Uh -huh. We have other stuff to do. I'm gonna start growing some in like a little terrarium or whatever and then like just harvest it to like make into different foods. 
It makes uh, what, what do you guys want? Well, I got some algakli soup, al algakli salad. Wait, what you feeling? Uh, ah, I know algakli hot dogs. Oh, that's good. Impossible algakli. <laughs> I can't believe already like. <laughs> You think algakli is impossible? Well, <laughs> wait till you see this uh, this new algakli recipe. Yeah, impossible algakli. Uh, <laughs> it's literally need, an affront to nature. <laughs> we need like an Orion Gordon Ramsay mm. or something. I guess. Uh, can I start working on another batch of? Because I I already made algakli. Might as well since I have the genetic spliciness in me. Can I make like? Uh, uh, do we have enough data on like the Gehenna, like their planet, from the uh, the kind of data terminal they had? To do what? Enough information on for what? Uh, basically, just grow food there. Uh, well, what you know about the planet <laughs> is that it's basically death. Um... Good. I wanna. <laughs> I want to make a. Uh, I actually, I actually want to make a. Uh, uh, I'm gonna call it Death Snare. Uh, it'll basically, uh, you know, it's very much not good. But if worse came to worst, we could unleash a biological weapon on their planet. Okay. I'm not gonna tell anybody, but can I make a uh, a type of plant that basically it's like brambleweed, but it'll like. It has a kind of vampirism towards psionic creatures. What? I want to make it so you know, like the the uh, the the reds. Uh -huh. I want to make a species of plant that specifically uh, feasts off of them. It's kind of like you know a Venus flytrap, but just imagine a bunch of bramble thorns just shooting out and grabbing something and pulling it in. Uh, this is gonna. This is gonna. They're going to have a whole new Geneva Convention after our... <laughs> I yeah. would like to make Death Bramble, please. Psionic Death Bramble. Death Bramble. Oh. Psionic Death Bramble, because otherwise it only works on highly psionic creatures. Oh. Okay. I mean, uh, we have their DNA. Uh, we, we have the ability to, to, you know, make an affront to nature. So I was wondering if I can kind of use my uh, biomechanical engineering to make Death Bramble. Psionic Death Bramble. I don't even know how to respond to this. Um, I, got, I need something to do. I finished my Algokli project, so it's it's evident that I can mess with with plants now. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, so are you wanting this specifically to work in the environment of Gehenna or just in general? Uh doesn't really matter as long as it's really good at growing and feeding off of the uh, the species. Well, I can tell you, literally nothing can grow on Gehenna. It's just, it, okay. yeah, that, How about that's this? impossible. That's a non -starter. Okay, the <clears throat> plant doesn't actually, like, it, it's kind of like, you know, like, tumbleweeds, how they kind of travel? Like, they'll tr they'll kind of propagate and travel and attack, like, uh, the reds, and then they'll, har they'll kind of siphon energy from the reds by like basically leeching off them like a parasite. Then they'll reproduce and spread out and kind of bramble themselves looking for other Gehenna creatures. So they don't actually have to be on the planet. They're not surviving on the planet. They're surviving on the reds. Uh, I don't even know where to begin this. Um... Luckily, I'm a nice GM, and I'm not just shutting it down immediately saying, no, this is stupid. But I'm also mentally trying to think, how can I actually do that? Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I got, I got, basically, I was thinking of doing some sort of weird combination of splicing plant and maybe the red's DNA itself as kind of a base coating. Okay. Um, you would need to have botany. I do. You have botany? I have space botany, yeah. Oh, astrobotany. Okay. Sorry. Astrobotany, see? Space science. Ah? Okay. Um, <laughs> <coughs> astrobotany. Try shutting it down. You need botany. Oh, perfect. I have botany. I mean, you do, so I can't deny that. Uh, let's see. What you're asking to do is just so out there. 
this is this is it's to be fair it's not the it's not i mean i made i made a gravity bomb out of uh, out of like starfish i'm aware of this i was there I, I witnessed it happen and in I real made time. A brain, it, I made Algogly. I made the brain interference um, MacGuffin goober yes. button that we plug into things. I mean, this seems like I, I have the skills. I, I did the prep work. I, I already made oh, okay. uh, an like a, a botany-based abomination, Algogly. I, I've analyzed the reds thoroughly. And I, I feel like I've kind of got that, like, pre-established prep time to kind of make an attempt, at least. All right, then. This is going to be because you're... So, botany... If you're, you're not, like, just trying to, like, cultivate a daisy here. Mm. This is, like... This is mad scientist abomination before God level stuff. Yeah. So this is going to be intelligence plus astral botany with a negative of 30. So basically, uh, you've got a 15, if, I, if my math's correct. So 15, 80 I'll, I'll plus write. 10, that's 90. 90, 45. 45 minus 30 is 15. So this is this is just to even get in the door to see whether it's even possible. This isn't like going from start to finish. This is going to be a, another multi-step process. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, might as well try. Yeah. But nah. No. <laughs> Imagine if it was a one, though. If it was a one, I would have cried. But yeah, we're <laughs> we're fine. See? It's... Okay. Okay. Uh. What were we doing? Psionic <laughs> <laughs> death bram was a little bit too of a too sharp of a turn. Huh? It was a little sharp of a turn there, bud. <laughs> that was a little bit like. What? Where are we now? Oh, right. That. Okay. Um. All oh, right. We were sitting, waiting for the um, for the uh, the Ardestian ship to leave the nebula. Right. Indeed. And also, oh, Tim. Right. You were going to contact the Ministry of Intelligence, right? Yes, I was. All right. So, what do you want to tell them? Okay. All right, so we you know, have... Let's let's just let's just play this out. All right. You're going to call them up. You're going to uh -huh. going to going to you're going to get the tone. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come up. Is this this is a secure line I'm using, right? Uh, it'll be linked to a secure line. Um, I don't know how they do secure lines in this setting, but private channel or whatever. But they definitely talk about it as though they do. Well, generally, secure lines require both sides to have the decryption. And I don't oh. think you've ever actually done that. Okay. Fine. But anyhow. <clears throat> so you're going to call them up? Yep. It's like, this is the office of the Secretary of Intelligence. This is Francis. How may I help you? Uh, hi, this is... Hello. You know, <laughs> this is uh, Commander, Lieutenant Commander Sorab from the... Lexington again. Uh, oh, hi, sweetheart. To... How you been? Not bad. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just lovely. Oh, Dorothy came over last night with some homemade cookies. They were the best. I should save that... some for you next time you're here. That sounds delightful. <clears throat> I have some information for the Minister of Intelligence about the uh, red alien species. Oh, I'm sure he'll love to hear that. Is he free? Would you mind patching me through? Uh, let me check. The line's gonna click. This, it's just. <laughs> All right. So he's gonna say. So you have information on the red side here. I. <clears throat> I have managed to secure a record of their colony ship's engagement with the Mars, and after comparing it with the information that we have from the Mars's logs, I believe that we have an opportunity to actually negotiate a peace. Give me a pause. Let me say, all right, let's, let's, we'll get to that in a second. Let's step back a few seconds. You contact them. 
Yes, I figured out how to. We are. We figured out how to communicate with them. It turns out their uh, communication network uses a vastly different system than ours or yours. And with the aid of the black box, we were able to back. Uh, how do you, what's that word? Huh? Data. Core. Yeah. With the with the with the aid of the data core, we were able to reverse engineer it. That's the most interesting news I've heard this week. All right. So tell me more about what their logs said. Uh, I do actually have a report on it here that I can send along. Uh, but the, the essentials are that uh, the all of the... The logs from the Mars clearly show attempts to contact them. Their logs clearly show attempts to uh, contact back. The timings line up in such a way that we now know that the energy signals the Mars picked up was a distress call. Um, given that we've been able to establish that this was a lack of ability to communicate and a reasonable misunderstanding, um, there is movement towards seeking the possibility of discussing a piece. He's going to pause and say, oh, this feels like something the whole council is going to be being involved in. Of course, but I figured uh, this is the type of news that you should be the one to deliver to them rather than say, calling the president directly or something. Hmm. Prudent, prudent. Is there any other relevant details you can give me before I present this? I can, I can send you the translation of the log. Um, it's, I don't know how well, it'll, it, how easy it will be to parse, but you could, you're free to examine it as well. say all right that would be most useful anything else um not this time we're waiting to hear back based on our our request to talk to the uh ardestian leadership as a neutral third party We definitely want to be involved in setting that up. But of course. Actually, hang on. Let's 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 step back a second. As a neutral third party, you there's a lot that goes into that statement. The the nature of the relationship that Terra Two has with the Ardestians required <laughs> that we remind them that we did not come from Terra 2, but have a standing relationship with Terra 2. Um, obviously, we have not discussed the nature of that relationship. The important thing is that they do not, they know that we were not sent by you to do this, but that we are seeking mutual benefit between them and you. We are, after all, fundamentally a diplomatic vessel. That's our actual mission. That is true, based on the reports and what you've told us. Yes. Very well, then. Um, I presume that you will keep me and the rest of us abreast of any further relevant developments. Of course. Very good. All right, Secretary of Intelligence out. All right, and I will, as promised, send him the the, the files that I promised to send. Okay, okay so that happened. <clears throat> All right, so what next?
What's up? I said, what next? Um. Well. <clears throat> that's tricky because I don't know. Um, what time is it? Uh, I guess we're, I guess we're going to hold here for a few days. In the meantime, we probably want to start working on getting any additional information we can out of the, uh, Farron wreckage that we have. Okay. All right. So. I'm going to take another crack at the foreign uh, data core. You can do those rolls again. It's been enough days. Hey. Yeah, I think I had to beat a 46. Mine was 25. I remember that. Yeah. Definitely not. I did not. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, course, like that. Was there any like intact Farron skulls? No. <laughs> There were no not. brains to be found. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, hey, you always got to check for extra brain matter, you know? Uh, so Chris can still do the role. So that's intelligence uh, <clears throat> and computer technology with a negative of 15. Oh, no, you all failed. Okay. Yep, <laughs> Sorry. I didn't I did. Okay. So... You're going to be waiting another few days. Um, when long-range scanners are going to pick up two incoming ships coming from Ardestian territory. Uh, I say shoot them on sight. Right Better now, they're, 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 at the, they're going at warp 7.5. Uh, Better safe than sorry. Just blast them out of the sky. Don't where does it different. seem like? Where does it seem like they're heading to? Directly towards us. Okay. Well, we'll maintain battle stations, but they clearly see us. Yes. So we will maintain position. Uh, maintain stations. Be ready for them to attack. Well, we're not going to sit at red alert the whole time. Obviously, they're not going to shoot us from half a quadrant away. But like, when they get when they're getting close to weapons range, we'll definitely go into high, into red alert, keep the shields up, and be red. You know, but be ready because we patch that thing into the ship system, so we should be able to hear if they try to contact us. Um. No, that was the actually, whole point of it. They're they're not going to contact us. Uh, so when you pick them up, they're about two days out. Uh, hmm. The other ship does not leave the nebula in that time. So what do the ships look like? Uh, when they get close enough, they are definitely uh, Ardestian, and they are larger than the ships that we fought earlier. Oh, no. by, by by configuration, they appear to be cruisers. So there's multiple of them. Two. Two. I, I'm sorry. I must have missed something in there. I thought we were talking about the ship that we were tracking coming out of the nebula. But no. you're saying these ones these, came no, out sorry. of the nebula. These no. These ships are coming from uh, our Destian territory. And they're coming towards us. Yeah, they're coming from this direction. Do you, do you see the arrow this time, Tim? Nope. What? I don't know why. Hang on, let me turn it back. Uh, now do you see it? No. All right. Uh, see it down by Gehenna. Ba basically, halfway between Gehenna and Johannesburg is where they're coming from. So like this? Yeah, more or less. A little farther, a little more to the north than that, but yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean... <sighs> We will, we will wait All right. um, until they get close enough so that we can kind of assess their their attention as much as possible. All right. So when they're uh, about six hours away, you're actually going to be able to tell that there is communication happening between those ships or one of those ships and the nebula. 
Okay. Um. Okay. Well. I'm going to go back to the Ardestian we have on hold and uh, in, I'm going to show him kind of these two cruisers and uh, give him the opportunity to request <laughs> the terms of his release again. Okay. All right. So you're going to do that again. You're going to patch him in. And yeah, he's gonna be able to establish communication with one of the uh, one of the cruisers. Okay. And basically, uh, what you're going to run down through is this is also gonna be a very brief conversation. Right. Uh, he's going to first ask what they're doing there. He's going to be told that they are under orders to destroy a Cochrane ship in this area. He's gonna try to explain that. These aren't the Cochrans, but they're not going to believe him. Uh, <clears throat> they're going to ask, what are you doing there? Said, I've been captured. Uh, he's going to request that they, um, <clears throat> that they, instead of like attacking, that there be a like discussion and possible release of him and the others. Uh, let's see. And uh, let's see. And um, let's see. That roll... Uh, they are not going to agree to that. Because this guy is not a diplomat. So he <laughs> has... Negotiation is not his strong suit, unfortunately. Right. <coughs> uh, the message is going to end basically by saying, Thank you for your service. You will, be, you will die an honorable death. Well, um, so they're about six hours out, right? Mm, correct. Um, do we have any idea what the, uh, what our tactical position is relative to them? Like how, if we, if we wait here, mm -hmm. are we going to die? Uh, well, you don't, I mean, you could, you could ask the Cochrans for information. They would know. Uh, we, you've never seen these ships before. But we can't, like, scan for weapons or anything like that? Uh, from this range, he... Okay, so what you're able to scan... Um, their weapons are powered up. They are the same basic type as the, of what you saw on the uh, ship. You said they are or aren't powered up? They are powered up. Right. Yes. Weapons are powered up. Uh, they <clears throat> So they're coming right at you. Shields up. They seem to be of similar um, energy signature to the weapons that the uh, one Ardistian uh, scout ship that you saw earlier had, but other than that, you really can't tell. Well, it's six hours out, but you're still on relatively long-range scanners, so you can't get super detailed information. Right. <clears throat> uh I, uh, I mean, our best option right now, what speed do they seem to be going at? 7.5. Okay. Um, and based on the readings you get, that appears to be, they're, they're running at very high output, so that seems to be, if not their top speed, very close to it. Well, uh, let's continue over here can you see my arrows hang on sorry i'm looking at something else uh let me tab over okay so you you want to retreat back to there yeah i want to head back that way at uh eight okay i want to see if they pursue or if they go on into the nebula uh what they're actually going to do uh that's going to take a few days but uh actually once you start leaving, they are going to stop at your previous position. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, all right, so I'm hoping to hear back from Terra too about whatever the intelligence minister tells the, you know, if the council ends up coming to a conclusion they want to tell us about. Okay. Um. And that will actually wait to hear back. So there were two days between when you saw those ships and when you decide to leave. Uh, so in those two days, you are going to get a call back. And it's actually going to be from the entire council. I'm sorry, my internet gets wonky with my door closed. What was that last bit? You are going to get a call back uh, like a day after... Like, uh, all right. So here's the timeline. You called them a while back. You see the other ships... About a day after you see the other ships, while they're still bearing down on you, you're going to get a call back from the entire council. Did you pick that up? Yes. Call back from the entire council. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to answer that. All right, so you're going to see a screen, all five of them standing there. Uh, actually, six, because Captain Blevins is once again behind her brother. Haha. Uh-huh. President Blevins is going to say, Greetings, Lexington. Um... I've been informed by uh, my Minister of Intelligence that you have been negotiating with the Reds. Am I gathering that correctly? We have managed to open communications with the Reds. We There's been no actual negotiations as yet. All right, so where do you stand with that? We have... Reached out seeking a uh, seeking their willingness to talk terms with Terra Two, uh, in which we would help by serving as mediators. Um, the that request is going up the chain of command, and we don't know. We are waiting to hear back from it. Uh, have you had any other interaction with them or anything else developing since? Um, we are currently tracking a ship that seems to have destroyed the vessel that our uh, senior staff was on. We don't know why they did so. Uh, they are not forthcoming with us. Um, they, they made it very clear they are on a very particular mission. And we don't know the nature of that or whether or not they have any survivors from that ship. But we are currently tracking them. They're within the Archer Nebula and we're essentially waiting (laughs) until either we hear back from somebody or they emerge. We did track uh, two vessels on the way to the nebula it appears as though they're going either to us or past us at this point we know they're cruisers right uh the cruiser size. Yes. yeah uh, i'm going to tell them they appear to be like we don't know their ships as well as you do but they look their configuration looks more like cruisers to us than than the ship that we were tracking initially uh when you say cruisers <clears throat> Uh, you're going to see Captain Blevin uh, become noticeably uncomfortable. Obviously, uh, they are seeking to enter your space. We only just picked up on them um, heading this way. Uh, But they are heading towards the Archer Nebula, possibly by way of us. We don't yet know their intention or what or who that sent them. She is going to uh, whisper in her brother's ear, and then she's going to step off of the like from behind the just step off screen. Uh, right. And actually, the Secretary of War is going to follow her. Okay. Uh, President's going to go. Well, that's a. Um, Thank you for bringing that uh, to our attention. That's more than slightly distressing. Uh, Mm. If I can read my sister's intentions properly, I strongly suspect she's going to see what ships are in your area and possibly 
send some assistance, but I don't know yet. Um, all right. Of course. Okay. So, at the moment... So, if I understand the situation correctly, you've made contact with them uh, in general. However, the current situation... Uh, have you attempted to make contact with these vessels? Not yet. Uh, I would highly recommend doing so. At your earliest convenience. Although, if I know anything about the Reds, it's probably going to be a short conversation, if any at all. But, please, of course, keep us abreast of that. Okay. Well, all right. Captain, I, I've, we, we've had this discussion before. Uh, or not, uh, Lieutenant Commander. We've, we've been over this before. Obviously, you don't take orders directly from us, and we, we understand. But I'm going to ask that you be very delicate in all of this, because your actions out there could very well decide the fate of our entire planet and the fate of life, and whether or not we all make it back to our galaxy, or we're all space dust. Of course. We, we're doing, we're being as diplomatic as we can at all times. Very good. All right. Well, um, not seeing anyone else here with anything to say, uh, I will let you go. Uh, and you're going to hear off screen. Hang on one second. And you're going to see Captain Levins come back over. She's going to say, um, Captain, I do have one ship uh, that is two days away from you uh, that would be able to offer assistance if necessary. How far away did you say that those ships are from you? Um, I, if I remember correctly, it was about they were going to get to us in about a day, right? One day, yes. Yeah. They're about one day away from us, but... Judging by their speed, I believe we can move closer to your ship if needed before there's any great date threat. All right. Very well. Um, in that case, I will give you the information in order to contact that ship. And I'll let you work out things on it. your end. But I will tell you one thing, Captain. Those cruisers, I know your ship is obviously a few leave some bounds beyond ours, but even then, do not take them lightly. The Reds, they build their ships for combat, and those cruisers, we have encountered them dozens of times, and we have only destroyed three. And every single time was at great cost to ourselves. All right. Uh, thank you very much. We will... We will try to avoid putting. <laughs> we will do everything in our power to avoid putting your people in danger. I appreciate it. We will do all that we can to help you. All right. So I guess we're going to reach out earlier than we had. Yes. And that conversation is still going to have happened exactly how it did before. The, they, there's no response. Right. Okay. So. Uh, we are going to reposition, and we will let uh, we will um, when we reposition, we will let uh, what's it call it? Contact the other ship and let them know. I'm just gonna look up that ship here. Real quick. Oh, I got notes everywhere. All right, that is going to be the the CDF Jefferson, actually. Okay. Right, so you reach out to the Jefferson. All right, Captain's going to come up and say, "This is Captain Roberts of the Jefferson." Been told that you've got a little bit of a red problem. Something like that, yes. Uh, we, I, 
I assume they informed you of why we're out here and we're keeping out and aware of them. Uh, yes. Told something along the lines of looking for the ship that had your senior staff, found it. Uh, it was destroyed by apparently a red ship. And you've been pursuing said red ship to the nebula, and now that's hidden in the nebula, and now you have some unwelcome company. Is that about to sum it up? Yes, we have reached out to them uh, after our after our discussion with the council, and it is very clear that they were coming here to attack our ship, under the impression that we were a that we were a member of the Cochrane fleet. Well, guilty by association, I guess. So when you changed positions, uh, you moved... Uh, let's see if Tim can see this one. Are you looking, Tim? Yeah. You, you're about right here now. No, I went... To... Oh, that that wasn't the way I was talking about moving, but it's oh, where Oh, well, that's are? where the ship's coming from. Oh, okay. So in order to meet that they were coming from this way... Actually, no, they're coming <coughs> towards, the, towards the star base, so they're, they're meeting them right there. Yeah, so that's... Yeah. And the, the red ships will have changed direction accordingly towards you. Okay. All right, so... Um, we've not encountered their vessels before. What... Can you give me an estimate on our odds here? Um, well, your ship's a bit of an unknown quantity to me. I would say that if it was just us, it's about five minutes, give or take, uh, between the two of them. Yeah. Uh, with you, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't see specs on your ship. All, I, all I've heard, the scuttlebutt among the fleet, is that you've got things that we've never seen before. So, I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, maybe we could. Maybe we couldn't. Those are some not some not great odds. Well, the uh, I'd, The Archer Nebula interferes with sensors. Do we know if it interferes with their sensors? That is a fantastic question, uh, considering I've never been in one of their ships. Probably, but that's just... I, I, I'm not a grease monkey. I am I pilot the ship. I don't design it or... I'm going to I, I gonna call... The I tell them how to pilot the ship. I'm going to call Calvo and ask him if he can... Quickly, uh, if he can, if he can check what we know of their uh, sensor array from all the information we've gathered on their ships so far. Okay. Uh, check to see if he can tell from their sensors if they would be affected by the Archer Nebula the same way we are. All right. So Chris is going to be able to access all the information on the data core, no problem. This is going to be an intelligence and electronics technology role because there's actually no Starship sensors technology for whatever reason. All right, so that's an 82 and 30 divided by 2. 86. All right, let me give it an old college try. Yes, mm, they would good. absolutely be affected basically the same as ours. Nice. I'm sorry, what was that? They would be affected the same as ours. Okay, so we have it on good authority that, yes, it would give that, us the same cover that it gives them. Um, if we can... If we can lure them into the nebula, um, we can either... Oh... That sound. <laughs> okay. Okay. So oh, sensors aren't gonna sensors aren't gonna fly, right? Correct. But 
we now know we now know how to trans we now know how to read their transmissions and they don't yet know how to read ours which means if they try to communicate with each other's ships and we're just listening for that psionic signature we can find where they are before they find where we are <laughs> all right captain is going to go <laughs> All right, Captain. So, <laughs> armed with this, Lieutenant Commander, armed with this information, what would you like to do? Uh, we, I believe we should head into the nebula, um, and we will, we will communicate coordinates to fire upon as soon as we have them. And uh, we're going to have to. Do you guys still follow the? Um, I mean, there's various maneuver names they they mention in Star Trek, like oh, uh, position such and such and, and whatever. Uh, are those the same as they were 150 years ago? Um, there are some that, if you look up, you'll know are from that era that they'll recognize. But anything invented after like 2163, they're not going to have. Any so there's some okay. real basic I'm gonna, ones, but I'm gonna ask our I'm gonna ask our pilot basically um, be in communication with them. Every time we shoot, we need to change position. Use codes that use codes that both ships are gonna understand. All right. I'm having to make adjustments to the map on the fly because of doing things. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's going to be interesting. Sure about this. All right. So, based on the speed of those ships, um, you are able to reach the nebula. About three hours before they do. Okay. Because you're being hindered by the speed of the, uh, the Jefferson. Right. Well, still, it's. Yeah. They they can top out at eight. Basically, so you were they were pushing it to get there, but they did. Um... All right. So, you are in the nebula. You're in the, basically just traced from where you were in the nebula, and you're now, like, where, where right, you were well, in the nebula, now you're inside it. So, I'm not looking right. at that map right now, because I'm looking at an entirely different map. That's fine. Uh, yeah, we, uh, I guess we'll just work from there, then. Uh, All right. We're going to get take-up positions, and... Wait. All right. So now I'm going to switch maps. This is going to be a large map because it kind of has to be for starship combat stuff. All right. You should be able to see it. I'm going to have to zoom out pretty far. So we are top right. And next to us is the Jefferson. Okay. And so you're able to keep an idea of where they are just based on communication. That's fine. So we're, right. for the purposes of this, where they are is not going to be a mystery. Uh, let's see. Um, oh. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, okay. There we go. All right, that's fine. So we couldn't see all the. There it is. All right, now we got all the stuff. All right. Why is there a hole in this place? What did I do? Man, I really was not hoping to lead combat without half our career. Yeah. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Decisions were made, roles happened, and sometimes this is where you wind up. Now, before you ask, I went in today not expecting there to be combat, so I'm not I'm not railroading this. This is just logically where things wound up. So, yes. I was not expecting I was not expecting to recreate <laughs> the, the, the battle from Star Trek Two, but better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, jeez, this is this is this is new and different. So okay. Um. Yeah. So, what are we gonna do? That is. That's. You, you, I mean, I'm, well, I'm not running this. You are. Oh goodness. Uh. Well, we're scanning for um. Psionic messaging. All right. Psionic. Um. All right. Oh, we're gonna. We're gonna. Also, we're gonna shut down. The device that's in that. Are our, our Destian's quarters? Okay. I know he doesn't want to die, but you don't. So know I don't think he's gonna call them. But like, I yeah, we I don't know. We know about Klingons who would rather die than. Right. So you don't know. That's a good call. That's a very good call. All right. Okay. So, uh, God, this is becoming the scene out of Star Trek Nemesis, where Deanna <laughs> is like trying to read where the Riemann is. <laughs> this is great. We're like, we're hitting all the high notes. Like oh, the, yes. One of the few good parts of that movie. Uh, okay, so, so red. Hi. Say what? Nothing. Uh, let's see. Do you have... All right, so Rev, you have sensors. Great. So, this is going to be you. Um, this is going to be a... Uh, it actually doesn't make any difference whether. So you're having to basically plug into the system. So this is going to be using your psionic abilities. So this okay, is. Okay, so. Yes. Okay, so that. <laughs> Here's the thing. What's the if thing? I'm kind of listening for psionic messages mm -hmm. and giving the coordinates to the. Uh, the tactical. Ta to tactical. I'm not really going to be in a position to be knowing what's going on in the rest of the ship all the time. So I think we're going to need at least one of the other people that's playing to kind of be directing things that I can't while I'm doing that. All right. Ooh. Well, it Responsibility. Should, it should be the captain giving orders, but in for our current purposes, it's going to have to be you acting as captain just based on who we do or do not have. And plus, you also got to remember, Matt's going to be gone for October, so we got to get used to this. Ah. <laughs> All right. So, well, our current positions. Uh, so, Coinless is going to be playing the role of Zack Thunder at helm, of course. Zack Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris is going to still do engineering things, because of course. All right. So here's how this is going to work. Uh, if there's any messages, you will detect them. I mean, but whether or not you succeed at detecting them will determine whether you know the exact position or just a general direction. Make sense? That's for me or Tim? Sorry. Sorry, this is for Tim. So if he's going to be doing the role for sensors and psionic, like okay. listening for them. Starship to be... sensors? Yeah, starship sensors and psionic. That's going to be the role for detecting them. If you succeed, I give you the exact position. If you fail, you're just going to get a general direction. Okay. Uh, starship sensors. So it should oh, be a 62 okay. and an It's 40. I'm rolling it's a 40. 
All right. Come on, dice. I need to be a. Okay. There. Right. It, it's, it's. I need to do a couple cleansing rolls. <laughs> Purify. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. not a great night for us. Oh, there is a good one. Okay. All right. So. All right. Can you see my arrow, Tim? Nope. I don't know why. Do I you honestly... guys see it? I see it, yeah. Two yeah, 24 yep, pointy squares. It. May try reloading, Tim, I guess? I don't know what else is asked to suggest. I could do that. It might be the internet, for all we know. All right. All right, you see it now. I do. All right. Coming from somewhere in this direction, you have no idea the distance, though, with that kind of a rule. So it's, it's... Okay, so I think we should move this way and then try again. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. I should be able to. Uh, yes, fish, you can move it. Yeah, yes, I can. Okay, so... Hold on a second. So somewhere in about this way. That general... Right? Well, uh, more... Let's see. Um, more uh, upper left. Basically, it, it, it's somewhat directly in front of us. Give or take. Okay, more okay. to the left from our view or the ship's view? From our view. Okay. And do I, I, I forget, do I need to make, like... Somehow I have I grabbed the token. I didn't mean to. So, it, so I gotta like, like angle this. it a bit differently, right? Alright, and now we are going to be using right. our standard uh, movements like we have. So I need to pull up start the combat. I can't, Stripper, I can't seem to select my circle to delete it, but... Starship Combat Mechanic Basics. There. It's fine. They can move it without it. All right, so mm -hmm. uh, Lexington, pretty sure can move ten spaces in a turn, and a turn count and, and rotating the ship counts as one movement. <clears throat> So definitely rotate it once to get this kind of angle. Yes, but we're we're wanting to move the other direction from what Tim right. said. We right. want to move. Okay. All right. So ping again, Tim, where you would like him to move towards. I, I see the giant circle. I thought that's that was not the... that. That's the direction oh, okay. that the other ships appear to be in, more or less. Ah, okay. Yes, um... the ship can move ten spaces in a turn. <laughs> there was a ping. I didn't see the ping. What was that? Yeah. Uh, Tim, I'll you were just... gonna. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. Just ping where uh, you're wanting him to move. And oh, this, this, right. uh, towards this way. Oh, yeah, okay. in, the, in this direction. I was distracted by the giant circle. I, I was zoomed in a bit. <laughs> I was like this, like oh, so I should head towards the circle. I was like no, okay. Uh, so if I turn. Uh, gotta grip, get the gripper. Can I do that? Uh, you can only turn up to 90 degrees. So, like, eh? Yes. So that's one space. And, and so... then... Two. 
Does diagonal still count as one? All right, so from where you were, you can go up to, <coughs> so about right, uh, about right there. Boop. Back end okay. or front? Yeah, I just see front. All right. And the Jefferson is, all right, what would you like the Jefferson to do? Um... They should probably go in this direction. Okay. Oh. Divide and conquer. Yes. <clears throat> All right. So they've got a movement of nine. All right, so other ships do a thing. You don't know what thing they're doing. All right, yep. um, more communication. So give me another roll. Oh God. Uh, same basic direction they were before. It appears, um, but you don't really know. Other but than that. that's over here. Uh, let me. So in relation to you, about that way. Somewhere in that arc? Yeah. You don't know how far again, though. They could be, like, way on the other end of the map, or they could be really close. Hmm. Okay. All right. More movements. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna head further towards the direction. Um, kind of straight line it or no, uh, turn to our left a bit this way and have them come about like this way. How many spaces was that again? I can move. You can move like... another nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm sure they appreciate uh, the necessity for certainty before we make make a move. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Enemy turn. All right. Give me another one of those rolls. Okay. Rolling us to 40 again. Oh, God. Okay. Jeez. Good news is um, you don't can't pinpoint them, but they are the, the one where the transmission is coming from this direction. Um... All right, with how close you are, the ship appears to be, yeah, in this general area. Like, where the... Oh, are you doing arrows again? Do you not... I'm in the oh, GM I layer! Think... <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't oh, see an arrow. Right. I was like waiting for the ping. I'm like, huh? So, like, somewhere here. All right. Um, I'm going to... Uh... I want to target right here. Okay. And then move basically whatever direction we can as quickly as we can. And towards I'm that, gonna, I'm uh, no, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of let our. This is the type of thing where they, that's gonna be up to our pilot. Okay. Uh, but we want to fire here and then not be where we fired from. Yes, that uh, and uh, and I would like the Jefferson to fire right about here, okay. and then also and then also 
you know, maneuver. All right, then. Um, okay. Uh, hmm, how are we going to do this? All right, so first for uh, good old Zack Thunder, we're going to have Coinless Roll. Um, so he has a 50-50 to hit. Um, normally, it would be a plus 15 for phase with phasers, but negative 15 um, because you don't know what you're aiming at in general. So, uh, of course, this would only hit if what you're aiming at is there. So go ahead and just give me a roll. So I just roll 50-50? Basically, yeah. Well, yeah, it's Shad the Duck, but... Thunder you, comes lightning. You've got lightning. this. Be quite a shock and surprise. Hey! <laughs> Alright. Uh, <laughs> well, the ship wasn't there, so you still missed. <laughs> ah. Sorry. Uh, Bam! I pegged that asteroid and shattered it. Oh, there's no asteroid. There was nothing there. You you hit I, I, where you were aiming, but where you were Zach aiming, there was nothing. He saw the bullseye and he hit it. It was a metaphorical bullseye, but... He still says it out. Bullseye! It's like, there was nothing. It's like, the, might, the mind won. All right. <laughs> the bullseye of the mind. And the Jefferson uh, also hit where it was aiming, but there was also nothing there. Uh, all right, so now you probably want to move. So I can do 10 as long as I'm not turning, right? Correct. I believe in the straight line tactic. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's. Alright. They'll never expect it. <laughs> They'll never expect I moved in a very straight line. <laughs> Alright, so. Um, so the sensors really aren't working. However, they, they're working enough that. You're going to detect two energy spikes coming from that general direction uh, that right. appear to match the signature of uh, Ardestian weaponry. You know, can I can I use that? Uh, what was it? The psionic scanner thing I had a while ago. Since fish is just kind of doing nothing. Uh, psionic scanner. Yeah, you remember the one I made like forever ago, and the the ship went invisible. Oh. Um. It was psionic? It was basically, it picked up psionic, uh, because we couldn't see the ships. So I'm like, okay, I'll pick up on psionics. And so it was built, and then remember how we gave the blue, we gave a copy of the blueprint to the Cochrane? Oh, so right, try. you yeah. did. Okay, um, well, you can think of that, and do. what do you want to do with that information? I was just going to use it in a cone towards that area, see if we can get a tighter lock on. All right, um... It, so it that has, to, that, like that has to run through the sensors as well. So what we can do, though, is that can give a plus 15. So Tim would be working with a 55 now. Yay! All right. All right. So they fired. Uh, you presume they've moved. So I guess it's time again. 55 this time, you said? Yes. Uh, All right. Um, just... Token there. Uh, from where you are, somewhere this away. But you can't tell distance. I'm sorry, what was the arrows? Somewhere this away. But you don't know uh. distance. Okay. All right. Um, okay, you can move again. I'm gonna make you know very tactical decision. Sharp, ninety degree turn. We're heading down, baby. Is that what the captain ordered? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> what is the order? The order is to continue kind of staying away from the core point and head a bit up. I'll head the other direction. Well, I, I could, I could 
head down and then just like back up. They'll never expect that. Uh, we move at half speed backing up. Two, They'll never expect it. Four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's about ten. Okay. Keep hitting wrong pop-ups, though. All right. Um, so, what's the orders for the Jefferson? What are the orders for the Jefferson? Um, I mean, like, like I, like I originally said, that's our. I expected our helmsman to be talking to their helmsman to coordinate our actions. Okay. So I, I command them both. I guess you do. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Uh. Continue on with the thing he was doing. I can't control the other one at all, so I mean... Right. Okay. Then he's just going to keep on trucking down there. You got this, guys. Just do do your thing. Maybe, maybe you know, take a bit of a, a, a right-hand turn from your angle, from the ship's angle, you know, a bit closer into the, the zone, but more or less, yeah, you're doing good. That'll happen next turn. It also three minutes to eleven. So if we wanted to, we could. Let's go through at least one more. Turn. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Give me another scan. Fifty. I think we lost Tim. I'm, oh, I'm, and he might be back. I'm, he's here for us. He's he's back. Uh, okay. Again, somewhere this away is distance. Uh, it's somewhere. Somewhere in this general vicinity, but really broad. Okay. Right. Um, Move again. So I see. So there is like something above us, right? Above us. I thought it was like it was this area got pinged before. That's just the way you're moving. No, everything's below you right now. Oh, yeah, then I'm just going to turn hard right. Okay. And it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight. Okay. All right, I think we can sneak in one more turn here. Can I fire blindly at. Can I, can I fire, like, right here? Right. This general area. Right there. Uh, yeah. If you would like to, sure. I mean, I got the extra time. Might as well take a couple of pot shots, Might right? Might as well, unless, yeah. Unless Tim doesn't want me to because it potentially reveal positioning, but... I mean... It seems as though they were over here somewhere and they've been moving this way. So, I mean, I think, I don't think they know where we are yet. We could probably get away with another shot. Okay. I'm going to fire here, 50-50. Do, do I get the hit chance bonus because of my thing or no? No, that's just to detect them. You're not right. aiming. You're, 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 you're not. Nope. No. What if I missed my target and it actually aimed over here and it hit it? <laughs> We're not even going to try, because <laughs> I'd have to calculate which way you missed. Um, did you already move this turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, so... Um, let's see here. Um, right. Okay, uh, the whole ship is suddenly going to shudder as it gets hit. Uh, and it's 11 o'clock. Perfect. Narrative. 
Oh, uh, yes. Did all, it was exactly my intention. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Maybe next week the dice will be nicer to us. Maybe next week the dice will be nice, and you won't make tactical blunders. <laughs> it's shoot, then move. That I was... wasn't prepared for combat. I was like, oh, okay, we're just going to chill. And then it's like, fight. Uh, like, what? Okay. So I'll figure out the damage on that. Uh... Stats. Do we know where they shot us from? Because maybe we can trace the trail back. Uh, that we will do next time. Because uh, they did that to us, so I imagine we can do it to them. <laughs> yes. Uh, let me look. It was it was strategically being hit in the face, so now we can find the trajectory of their punch. Getting hit in the face. Yes. I gotta look up the combat the uh, stats on that. I've lost it on offhand, but anyhow. All right, so that, yeah, great way to, I love it when this, this show ends like that, just like with, with getting it. Because <laughs> uh, remember, also, you don't have shields up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's fun. All right, oh, guys. I said we had our mind shields up before. We're in the nebula. Oh, all right, we don't have shields in the nebula. Okay. Correct. Fine. Fine. I know. I'm this so is how mean. we lose the Lexington. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, guys. Well, that was exciting. I love ending on a cliffhanger. Man, we can just hold it over. Hey, guys, you missed last time. Coinless almost got the ship destroyed. <laughs> no, it's Zack Thunder. Very different. Played by... Coinless. Somebody who shall not be named. Coinless. Coinless. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, let's go to more fun things. Hey, Tim. You know what you want to talk about today? I know what you want to talk about today. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, uh, as a reminder, we do this. This channel runs uh, for Extra Life. Extra Life is a charity of the Children's Miracle Network, in which we gain to raise money for Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Uh, so definitely go to. Is somebody in the chat? Can you? Is anybody in the ch that's here in the chat? I still. I don't have the ability to. All right, hold on a second. I'll just go on the website. Let me just uh, access that real quick. There's a link coming, viewers. Happy there viewers. is a Don't link worry. coming. It's coming. Just, just hold on. You'll, you'll just wait for it. So if you go to there that link that I've just shared, uh, that'll take you to our team page on the Extra Life page. Uh, you can check our roster. Select any of us that have pages up and you can donate to the hospital through us. Uh, no, all, every second goes to the hospital. We don't see a dime of it. Executives don't see a dime of it. It goes to treatment. It goes to supplies. It goes to entertainment so that the kids can be kids. So, uh, help us help kids by please making a donation today. All right. Oh, a point for everyone. Of course. Wait, Make all sure right. You wrote down your roles. If, if you don't remember what they were, I can't help you. You can watch the, you can watch the recording later to figure it out, but that's on you. But, um, yeah. So, I got nothing else. Uh, good time was had by all, I hope. I know I did. Absolutely. Escape, escapism. Yay. Yeah. I need that. So, uh, yeah, that's basically all I got. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Good night, all. See you next time. Live long and prosper. Good night. Prosper. <laughs>